Hi, I'm here with Michael Colby. Um, we're going to be talking about apparently what is the crappiest job he's ever had. And I'm super stoked to hear this. Um, hi, I'm Michael Colby. I am currently from uh, the podcast Jack Billings Presents Me and My Neighbor Michael. It's a comedy podcast about neighborhood goings on. It's not for everyone, but uh, the people who it is for seem to enjoy it. Uh, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Um, we are here to talk about the crappiest job I ever had, which was in the service industry where um, I used to go to people's houses and I would clean their carpets or we also did like disaster cleanup, like after fires or floods or if you know, somebody died in the house. Um, I've cleaned up after that. Um, if the if the sewer would back up into the basement, I have I have been literally in waders, um, walking around in sewage up to almost my like hips. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, the worst part about it is um, after a while, you sort of get used to it. Uh, I still remember the first uh, sewer backup I was ever in was in this, like a row home in the city. And it was, uh, again, up, up, you know, a little bit past my knees. The, the, the details that I remember about this stuff are are horrendous. Like, I wish I could forget it, but, um, so we were in sewage up to our knees walking around, you know, and you have to, you know, find the drain on the floor and get it taken care of. So like, we would have to put our arms in it and, and do all that stuff till we could get it drained. And the first time I was ever at one, I would get, uh, like, I had to leave to go out of the basement, to go up to a trash can to throw up and then go back down <laughs> into this shit covered basement, you know, <laughs> down to my knees until we could get it all drained out. And then since it was in a row home, you know, they had those sort of cages where people would keep all of their stuff. So then we had to get the boxes and take those out. And then we had to like catalog everything for the insurance. And we had to take, like, we would take pictures and stuff of this stuff that was in cardboard boxes that's just covered in sewage. <laughs> uh, I, I threw up probably 10 times that first one I was ever at. And then before I left that job, um, I, I remember the first one and I remember the last one. Like those are the ones I remember very clearly. Uh, the last one I was at, there were three women living in this one house and the, their sewer backed up. And that was not as deep, but it was in like a much larger area. And we were down there and after about half an hour of waiting around in this stuff uh we found out the reason that the sewer backed up was because all three of these women were flushing their tampons yep i knew it that's exactly what went to my mind when you said three women living in a house I there was it. a there was about 50 of them that just shot out oh! so <laughs> oh! no so, <laughs> Me and the guy I was working with, like at this point, we were so, we were so like immune to being grossed out by this kind of stuff that when we would find one, we would pick them up by the string and fling them at each other <laughs> <laughs> because it was the only way that you could get sort of through the day doing that kind of work. Right, it's, yeah. it's no, it's, it's really no fun at all. Like it's horrible. So, uh. And, I gotta ask really quick, was the pay okay because you guys had to do nasty things? Like no. No, no okay. the pay wasn't the pay wasn't okay. As a matter of fact, the job that I do now, um, I sit in a very clean room 
and I'm sitting and, you know, I'm doing a, a relatively easy job, you know, uh, and when I went from where I worked before to where I work now, I got a $3 an hour pay rate. <laughs> it's like I'm making a lot more money doing a much easier job with better insurance and everything. But it was, you know, I did the job for like 15 years. So it was sort of one of those things where I was comfortable and didn't even think about, you know, moving. But there were, you know, a series of events that happened sort of right in a row uh, that that made me go to. And then once I started finding other jobs, I'm like, no, wait a second. This job pays so much more than what I'm making now. Like, why am I, you know, I never had to like see a body but I, I had to clean up once after this guy who I forget what happened, but it like paralyzed his legs and he lived by himself. And he just, he lived for like three days, but he couldn't get to anything that let him, you know, contact anybody. So he ended up dying, but he was living and couldn't move his legs. So he was like crawling around. So there was like streaks of where he was going to the bathroom sort of on himself and, and dragging him around and, and blood. And, you know, then he died and was there for a couple of days before anybody noticed. So like there was a puddle of just the, the, the pretty much gore that you know and they sent me there by myself they're like all right well just spray it with bleach and then do you know your normal thing and it's like oh wait a minute you had to like go in there by yourself and there's just mm -hmm. remain not remains but like evidence and all mm -hmm. that from this guy who would just die and you're just in there by yourself like Mm -hmm. Oh man, I would have at least needed a buddy for that one. <laughs> yeah, I didn't always get a buddy because it was it was a small place and there was I think three full time people. Um, so you didn't always get somebody to help you with everything. It was it was it was rough. <laughs> so yeah, that was. That, that was sort of the gross side of it. I mean, we would go, we would do fires like, uh, you know, there's always with disaster stuff, there's always like, a, like a bummer attached to it. Like, you know, this, you know, whatever happened, it's a disaster for a reason like that sucks. Um, but like anything like that, there was one time we were, this guy's basement flooded. So we're there and we had to, you know, clean up the carpet and, you know, put the drying equipment in and do all that stuff. And then two days later, there was a thunderstorm and lightning struck this dude's house what? and it started on fire. What? <laughs> like, you know, and yeah. So, so that kind of stuff, like that was always that was always a bummer to go to people's houses after a disaster. And like, you're, you're with them in usually the worst time of their lives. Yeah. And you're just there trying to, you know, you're there trying to help them, but you know, at that point in time, they don't see it that way. You're, you know, they're already upset and you're like a stranger that's in their house. And yeah. So people didn't always treat you great. Yeah, it was just, it was not a happy situation to be working in most of the time. Um, did you ever have any other like like funny things happen like while on the job? Like funny things happened all the time. Um, it wasn't all disasters. It was, um, it was. Uh, we also did 
like just your your standard like carpet cleaning and and like upholstery cleaning and stuff so there were the days when there wasn't like shit all over the carpet yeah yeah growing up all over the place and someone's yeah. <laughs> and didn't just explode there was yeah there was a day where oh i imagine you'd be like oh we just have to clean the carpet today it's okay yeah the the vast majority of the days were the vast majority of the days were were not disasters but you know just like anything else the disasters are the ones that that stick out in your mind yeah. but um but yeah when when you were on a normal day you normally hmm, I, I was gonna say you normally don't get treated too bad but that's also not necessarily true because you know if you know too many people you know that a lot of people are you know pretty much scumbags who think that people you know in the service industry are below them so right. you're at their house doing you know whatever and they're just sort of treating you like crap right which you get used to after a while but I also I always thought it was funny because the other thing about people is that they're still people <laughs> yeah so they still have stuff like um you know I, I the amount of sex toys that I would find, like uh, there weren't too many weeks where I wouldn't go without finding somebody's sex toys. But uh, also, you know, in that category, there are also some standouts. <laughs> like uh, there's a college not too far away from us. So I would we would clean up, you know, after the college kids left in like these rental houses near the college. So, um, you know, those were always filthy. They always smelled like sweat and old beer that people spilled all over the place. And, you know, they were just generally, you know, disgusting, but the one there was a, uh, in the kitchen, there was one of those like pimp chalices. What? Yeah. You remember yeah, those yeah. from like the like the early two thousands? Yeah, they were exactly like what you're the about. big things, and they're like bedazzled and stuff. Um, I found one of those in like a frat house, and it was just full of dirty underwear. Like they were collecting the underwear of the girls that they had come over. Oh, okay. There was about there had to have been 25 pairs of disgusting dirty underwear <laughs> in a pimp chalice <laughs> in the kitchen <laughs> like you know at, at, at some point I get it like I was also a college age kid so I get it but at the same time why in the kitchen like that's where you eat <laughs> um and then there was also one of my favorite stories is I was at this lady's house, like a, a normal middle age, we would probably call her a Karen now, but, <laughs> but back then it wasn't, you know, that wasn't a thing, but uh, I'm at her house and I'm just doing, and you know, they would have me go into their bedrooms and stuff and clean the carpets in their bedrooms. Oh boy. Well, she had, uh, like a basket, like one of those Longenberger baskets. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a nice basket. And then in the basket, like arranged were just dildos. It was just like a collection of dildos and like tubes of lubrication and like everything you need just in a basket sitting next to her bed, just out in the open. And I'm like, you know, whatever, but like, you know, you know that somebody's coming to your house to clean well, your carpets. Well, like, there's, there's two things. Like, I don't know. It, it kind of looks like she needed to be prepared or something. Like, she needs to have that ready to go. Uh, or, like, uh, <laughs> maybe she wanted the people coming over to see it. <laughs> That's what people seem to to think when I tell them that story. <laughs> They're like, oh, well, maybe she was trying to tell you something. It's like, 
fine. It's fine. I would have I would have walked in there and looked at that like with with the way you're explaining it was arranged. I would look down and be like, what happens to you? <laughs> <laughs> I just assumed she was lonely because, yeah. I mean, there there was like like I said, there was like a collection. There was like ten of them in there with with everything just right there. Like, put that stuff in your closet. <laughs> But maybe she was trying to tell me something. I'm not one to pick up on signals like that. So, um, but yeah, there was also, like I said, you know, not everybody was nice. Uh, so, you know, this one particularly nasty lady, uh, she was just the whole time like, oh, you're not doing this right. No, you're not doing this. I can't believe you're not doing this and this and this and this. So again, I'm up in her bedroom. And she says, make sure you get underneath the bed. Okay. So I, you know, it's under a bed, so you can't like do whatever. So I'm laying on the ground and just pulling stuff out from under this lady's bed. And all of a sudden I grab and I feel something and I know immediately what it is because it's squishy and it has a distinctive shape. And I'm like, I'm like, this goes in this lady's butt. So, no. <laughs> uh, so that was the last time that I ever did that job without wearing gloves. Uh, but she, like, normally I would find the stuff and I would put it back, you know, where I got it and nobody would ever know. But this lady was so nasty to me that I'm like, you know what? I'm going to set this thing on her nightstand <laughs> so that she knows oh she knew that, that, I that, know, that I she, know. was it was it like a big chungus too or was it like no 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 it wasn't <laughs> i mean it was i would say average okay. size <laughs> I love how you do this, like. but, <laughs> but uh no it wasn't it wasn't like one of those that you would see on, you know, Pornhub or it, anything. It wasn't, it, was, it wasn't Godzilla's. Own. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't the man hammer. It was a, uh, <laughs> it was a normal ass butt plug, but, oh, but I, I had to sit it, you know, right next. So that, you know, I know, I know you put stuff in your butt lady. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, I don't know. I don't know how I can make eye contact with like that person. Like if I set it there and I just look at him and be like, <laughs> Well, she didn't see me. She didn't see me. Uh, so I was making extra eye contact because I knew that once she went up to her bedroom, she would know that I knew. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not shaming anybody that, that no. <laughs> would, you know, that puts stuff in their butt. It's fine. But when you're going to be, you know, an asshole to me and, you know, treat me like, you know, I'm nobody. And then I find your butt plug, you know, that's, that's funny to me. <laughs> I, yeah, I, that's... Know. I, I think these women kind of wanted like the, the people coming in their house to find these things from what I'm hearing. And it does not surprise me in the slightest. Uh, there, you know, uh, again, I'm not one that, that picks up on that kind of stuff. So if that was, if that was the case, um, I just didn't notice, okay. but, uh, th I mean, there were a couple of cases where they were blatant about it. Oh, um, geez. she, uh, you know, the, the one lady, she had a couple of kids and so in her minivan, there was spills in the backseat of the car and I'm already there. And I'm like, she's like, you know, she said something. She's like, oh, can you do the back seat? Cause the kids keep spilling stuff. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, that's fine. I'm like, I clean, clean the back of the thing. And she's like, oh, how much, you know, extra. I said, don't worry about it. It took me 10 minutes. She goes, oh, well, um, do you want to go up to my bedroom? I'll give you a blow job. I was like, whoa. What? <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, she said she said that to me. What did you say? What? Oh, I, I, I'm also socially awkward, so 
after a little bit of stuttering and stammering, I was like, uh, yeah, maybe next time I come <laughs> over, I'll <laughs> You're like, take I you up want, on that. But... I don't want to tell you no, but I'm not going to tell yeah. you yes. No, no, I definitely, yeah, I definitely didn't want to tell her yes, because I mean, I'm married for one right. and for the other, I mean, I was at work, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not here to. I'm not here to get a blowjob from you, lady. Just give I me an extra 20 bucks like everybody else does. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of that way too. Like I can I can be a little socially awkward. Like there's two things come to mind if that would have happened to me personally. I would have either like had this really awkward laugh like <laughs> uh, like that or I would have looked at her like in my mind like no, 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 no. Like no, that, that. There, was, there was definitely an awkward laugh involved. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, the other, the other one that I can remember is, uh, see, I'm supposed to be telling you about the, the worst part of this job, but <laughs> these are, these aren't too bad. Um, it, a lot of the job was okay, but when it, when it was bad, it was, it was really bad. Um, but the other story that I have that, that involves like people being blatantly sexual towards me is, um, I don't know if you ever had your your like couch cleaned. I haven't actually. Okay. Well, I mean, it involves whoever is cleaning it pretty much being on their knees and and scrubbing, oh you know, the cushions and stuff. So, uh, this one lady was I, I was there. I was cleaning the couch, and she was talking to me, and uh, I'm you know I'm working, so I'm paying attention to that. And then she said something to me. You know, she she said, "Oh, do you want to, you know, do you want something to drink or whatever?" And I look up to to see, and she's standing like right here <laughs> with just like a t-shirt on, and but that didn't matter because I was down on the ground looking up. <laughs> <laughs> it was right in my face. <laughs> I'm like, oh, uh, I'll take uh yeah, I'll just uh, give, I'll take a water. <laughs> Man, you, d d I don't know if I should say housewives. I don't know if that's sexist or just the desperate housewives. I don't know, like what's what the term that. Yeah, know. I'm I'm not sure, but it that that sort of thing happened. I mean, once would have been more than I was comfortable with, but that it, happened it way before. more than I was comfortable <laughs> with. Oh geez. And that was that was when I was younger and better looking, so uh um, but I yeah. do really quick, I do have a few stories I like I like to kind of give one back. It's a quick one. I, I did have a job kind of like that, obviously not as, as crazy. Um, I took care of like the elderly people and I went to their homes to go do it for a little while. And um, oh, I, I, okay, I, I always have to put this out there. I am not judgmental, kind of like you said earlier, but um, I showed up at this one lady, this one person's house and it was an older gentleman. I heard that he was a, a retired policeman from Hawaii, which I was like, that's kind of cool, I guess. And I show up and he's at least like, I didn't know how old he was. And I actually, um, I didn't even ask. She told me at one point he was like 98 years old and it was his wife. It was his wife. And I look at her and like, I'm, I think I was like 20, 21 at the time. And I, and I, I looked at her and I asked, like, I don't know, we were, I got really comfortable with her and I asked like, how old are you? If I may ask, she was, oh, I'm 18. And he, and he was like, as old as he was. And I'm there and I, yeah, I'm there and it's whatever and I'm taking care of him and she, um, oh, she comes in, she comes in at one point and she's wearing like not a lot and she comes in and this guy not doing so hot, the guy can't even move and uh, she comes and just sits in his lap and she um, calls him daddy a couple times and I was like, I was standing there and I just kind of got uncomfortable and I started just to walk, I walked away for a little bit. I literally went into that room and I was like, <sighs> cause I didn't know how to feel, but I think that was one of the funniest things. Like I'm not judging her, like whatever, if they're happy, whatever. But I, it was a little, I wasn't expecting it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. That that's awkward for, for you. Like, you know, you're, you're right. If, if it makes them happy, 
fine. But well, um, I, I really I forgot to leave out why I wasn't judgmental. Um <laughs> this um this gentleman had a really nice hat place. Uh-huh. He, he had some he had some coin. Uh-huh. So I'm just I'm just gonna leave that for interpretation. Not I'm yeah. not saying that's what why she was there, but it was just a little like, you know, like <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's mine for you. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a way to do it, man. Just get it, get it while you're young and, <laughs> and then you have it. <laughs> it's not like, I mean, if he's 98, he's not, you know, he's not going to be making you do that for very long. Whatever. Yeah. So, uh, uh, that did remind me one more quick story. I don't know how much time we've actually oh, been you're going fine. on, but, you're fine. um, uh, I did have one one guy. I was at the house. Oh, hmm, that made me re- remember two stories. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was at the house, and there was a lady. She was in her nineties, um, and the guy kept saying, "The guy kept saying to her, you know, you know, this guy's here to clean the carpets. Don't bother him. Stay in your room just until he's gone." And, you know, we're not going to worry about it. So, you know, her bedroom's upstairs and I'm upstairs, you know, doing the hallway and, you know, the other bedrooms and whatever. And while I'm on my way out, she opens up the door to her bedroom completely nude in her 90s, just standing there in the doorway, just oh, you're going to come in and, you know, do my room too. I'm not here to do that. <laughs> Just close the door. And the, so I, I was like, I was wondering what this guy was talking about when, when he said, you know, stay in your room, don't bother this guy while he's working. And um, I know why he was doing that because yeah. apparently that's something that she does. She just gets naked and walks around the house and not you know not exactly what i wanted to see that day oh uh another naked story (laughs) before i get to the other crappy story that i remembered um uh, there was a we were at a family's place and and uh you know it was two parents and a girl she was like 18 or 19 years old and we're like all right well we're just about done with the rest of everything we have to do I said the only thing we have to do is is your daughter's room yet and he goes oh no just go in there you know she's sleeping but just go in and do what you're doing okay kind of weird but you know there was two of us so we were you know we're like all right well we both know that this guy you know so nobody's gonna accuse us of anything weird we we know what we're doing um but we open the door and she sure as shit is laying in bed uh sleeping topless (laughs) and i'm like (laughs) like uh sarah we really can't go in here and do what we're doing right now just can you please wake her up and you know get her out so that we can so yeah that that kind of stuff did happen kind of often um the the one last the one last like horrible story that i remember didn't have anything to do like it wasn't like super gross or anything um but there was a guy who lived in this big house. We, we did a lot of like rich people's houses um, and he lived in the house. And then his parents lived in like an apartment above his garage. Uh, so I did the apartment above the garage first. And then, you know, I'm in the big house doing stuff there and the dad comes into the room, like comes into where I'm working. And he's like, he's like, Oh, that, the guy from Comcast was in here and uh, he stole my hat. Uh, And I was like, I was like, what? And he goes, he goes, "Uh, I got to go find whatever the, the guy's name is. And, you know, so this guy thought that I was the guy from Comcast and that I stole his hat. 
And then I find out that this guy is like an ex Marine who has dementia and he's sort of snuck right up on me. And if, you know, if, if his son wasn't there, you know, I don't know. He, he could have had a weapon and he would have snuck up on me and he would have known what to do to, you know, hurt or kill me. Yeah. (laughs) Like I, I'm, I'm a six foot one, 250 pound, you know, bearded, big, bulky man. Like I'm usually not worried about my safety, but when that happened, like, I was like, I could have just died and I wouldn't have known. Like that guy could have just, you know, grabbed a knife from the kitchen, thought that I was the guy who stole his hat Yeah, and just, you know, he he would have felt like he was justified because I was on his property, you know, stealing his stuff. Right. And, you know, he could have just done that. And I'm like, wow. (laughs) So yeah, that was, that was pretty scary. So yeah, it, it was, that job was uncomfortable. It was uh, disgusting. It was disgusting almost every day there there weren't too many days where i didn't have to clean up you know some some corner of the of the living room where the cat pissed all over the place or like somebody didn't let the dog out so it shit on the floor or whatever um so it was always disgusting you know kids kids throwing up and kids crapping all over the floor or you know whatever and then sometimes it was scary. Like <laughs> I did not get paid enough. I had horrible health insurance. Um, like I said, I got I got laughed at into my face when I asked for a raise. Um, oh yeah, we, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, we had a company picnic where uh, they set up this picnic, and then we had to work before this picnic and all the the bosses and the office people were at, you know, at, it it was like one of those barcades. Um, And they're like, all right, well, you're going to meet us here after you do the job. There was five of us in the van. And when we got there, they're like, um, we actually got an emergency that all five of you guys have to go to. So, they sent us away from the company picnic to work while the bosses and office people <laughs> enjoyed yeah. their dinner. They're like, uh, here's 50 bucks, get Arby's or something. <laughs> so that was, that was the second thing that happened. And then the third thing was uh, we would be on call. And the one Saturday I was not on call. So I didn't have my phone directly next to me and, uh, there was a knock on my door (laughs) Saturday morning, like eight o'clock in the morning, there's a knock on my door and I'm like, what is going on? So I answer the door and it's my coworker. And he's like, he's like, (laughs) I'm not going to say his name. I'm not going to say his actual name. He's like, Bob is pissed that you are not answering your phone. I'm like, I'm not on call. He's like, well, we have this huge water damage that everybody has to go to. He's like, he's like, let's go now. I'm like, no. so, well, I, I, I mean, I went, but then I came back that day and that's when I started applying for other jobs. I don't, that was like the last straw. Okay. <laughs> I don't blame you at all. I, that's one thing like I don't, I can't stand is like when you work for a place and it's your day off and they'll, they'll be like, mm, you're coming in though, right? Yeah. No, it was, that was, that was a constant, like I, I had to fight to get a week off so that I could go on vacation. And then, you know, I, I started this job that I work at now and I was there for one year and they, you know, I showed a little bit of initiative. Um, uh, and you know, I'm not like uh, any sort of genius or anything, but I, I think I'm a little bit smarter than a lot of people. I've met a lot of people and I'm a little bit smarter than a lot of people. 
<laughs> so, you know, I showed that. And within a year, I was promoted to, you know, I had my own department and, you know, I got a huge raise for that. And, you know, just sort of my quality of life in the five years that I, you know, that I've been working at this new place, like, I wish I would have done it 10 years earlier. I really, um, I really believe that, like, there's so many people that, and you worry that they get comfortable, like, and they have all this untapped potential in them. They're doing something that they just can't stand, but it's paying the bills, but they've got so much untapped potential. And I wish, but sometimes it's just not, it's not a thing that people can do. They can't just jump out and take a risk. And I understand that. And it, it makes me sad though. Like there's so many people that are so smart or they have so much potential. They're in the wrong line of work and they just have to keep doing what they're doing. And it it's, yeah. makes me sad. No, it's, it's hard to do. And you know, if I, if I have a piece of advice for anybody, like if anybody would listen to my advice would be, you know, you don't have to quit your job and, you know, and then look for something else. Like, but if you hate your job, it is not it, like, it's not a bad thing to start looking for another job while you still work there. Like, get another job. Take a day off. Like, take a vacation day to go on, you know, to go on an interview at a new place. You don't know. Like I said, I wish I would have done it 10 years earlier. Uh, it, Yeah, it's scary to start something new. But if you hate your job that much it's definitely worth it. Like do it, yeah. <laughs> like really do it. It's not, it, it's, it's better than to wait until you're, uh, I'm, so I was like 36 years old when I made a move like, and that's a big life change to start a whole new career in something that I was never involved in before. Um, but if I would have done it at 25, like I would have had a, a, a better time of life. So, you know, I know that most of the people who watch stuff on YouTube are, are younger than I am. So that would be my advice. Don't wait until you're 35 and, and something happens where, you know, it breaks your will. You don't need to do that. <laughs> like, start looking for stuff while you're working at your crappy job that you hate right. um, and you know start something start something it, it's yeah and and even now like and now I'm not afraid to try new things like when I was working at that place I would have never even thought to start a podcast because that that wasn't something you know, that I, but now I have two of them <laughs> and I, I, you know, I edit other people's podcasts and, you know, it, it's one of those creative things that, that I'm able to do now because I'm not on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, That's do, awesome. do it while you can do it. And if, if it gives you enough time to do what you love, that's even better. Well, thank you for the advice, like for other people. I, I always love it. Like when I don't have to ask, like, Hey, give me advice. And you just came out and gave it to people. And that's what I like to hear. Cause like I said, like I said earlier, it makes me sad that so many people are doing things that they hate, you know, yeah. the way that I like to look at it is like, you know, you look at, I make $10, 10, $12 an hour. Look at it like this. I sold 10, I sold an hour of my life for $12. I wish that more it was worded like that and more people mm -hmm. like because if more people looked at it like that they'd be like oh I oh boy you know yeah and it's not it's not just the money if you're doing something that you enjoy for ten dollars an hour yeah that's great yeah. like but but to work that hard doing something that you hate for ten twelve dollars an hour that's not going to make you happy in any, you know, in any reality, there's, there's no way that that's going to make you happy. And, uh, I tried to, like I said, I'm, I'm 40, I'll be 42, like two weeks from now. Um, 
And a lot of the people that are in my department are like in their 20s, in their early 20s. So I sort of, you know, have taken up the role of like sort of, sort of a dad type person. So I, you know, I always tell them, you know, this is the place that we work at. Um, And it's, it's fine. They, they take care of us. They, they pay us decent. They give us good, you know, benefits and stuff. But if this is not what you want to do with your life, then start trying to find something different because you don't want to be miserable. Like there's the people that work where I work are like 20 year olds who are just starting and then like 60 year olds who have been working there since they were 20 and are miserable. (laughs) So it's like, you don't want to end up like these people, like, you know, do this until you, you don't enjoy it anymore. And I'll miss, uh, you know, I'll miss you. You're my children, but, (laughs) but I don't, you know, I don't want you to be stuck here forever. Well, and I respect you being honest with them though. That, that's awesome. I, I, I think that's one of the reasons I enjoy my job is I work with a bunch of teachers. I work at a middle school and I noticed like, even when I did substitute for a little while, I noticed, I would say like 95% of the teachers like loved what they were doing in their job and everything. And it kind of, it, it made me want to stick around and just never leave. And I started school to, to do that, to actually be one of them. And that's one of the reasons I did it is because it wasn't the money because everyone knows, you know, teaching isn't the highest paid career for the schooling, but I'd never seen people like so happy to be doing what they were doing. Like in it, like put this, it put this feeling in like in me that I'd never had before. Like I had never woken up and wanted to go to work before. And I loved being around these kinds of people. They gave me, they inspired me. So that's another thing I would suggest is if you can be around people that inspire you in some form, they'll keep pushing you and you won't even know it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's what I try to do. I, I always, I always try to remember when I'm teaching somebody something, I try to remember how I felt when I first started doing that. Yeah. You know, there are jobs that we do that, you know, for somebody who's never done something like that before, it's hard. So I always tell people, you know, one of my favorite things to to tell people is when I first started doing the job that we're doing now, um, I thought I was going to have to quit because I was never going to get it. But, you know, as long as you're patient and learn the job like it you know eventually like I said it it was a year that I was there before they were like oh you're good at this like but I really thought I was so bad at it that I was you know gonna get fired but that's not the case like you're not gonna be good at things right away you have to work at them and sometimes you don't even have to work that hard at them you just have to you just have to commit to it Definitely. Well, thank you so much for telling me like these super awesome stories. I've enjoyed them, like incredibly enjoyed them. Like they've been awesome and you made me smile. You made me laugh quite a few times. Like I never know what to expect with whoever jumps on with me, but it, this has been great. Thank you so much. I really no problem. It. No problem. Thank you for having me on this. Yeah. This was, this was much more fun than I not that I expected, but like I, you know, we were talking before and I said, I'm not used to being on video. Uh, and we do a, you know, we do sort of a scripted comedy show. So, uh, you know, one of my characters does like an improv thing, um, reacts to the crazy stuff that's going on around them. But I'm, I'm used to having a much more structured sort of environment to do my weird storytelling. So yeah. So this, but you, you made it very comfortable for me. So anybody who, you know, wants to come on the show, I highly recommend it. Well, Definitely go on. And I will um, let everybody know to that. I'm going to, that I'm going to be on here and, and to check it out. So oh, thank you so much. That means a lot to me. <laughs>
awesome. Well, I hope you have a good rest of your night and you're super, super awesome. Thank you. You're awesome too. <laughs>